once again to welcome us into the territory, uh, respected cultural leader and respected elder Butch Dick. We spend a good morning with good people, with good intentions. I thank the people who have brought this day together because it's a very important day. I thank the drummers. I thank the elders. I thank the ladies who stood beside us in our deliberation. We could feel your prayers and your strength. I stand here as a member of the Lekwuggen community to bid you welcome. I stand with you as a member of the community, as a husband and a father, a grandfather and a great-grandfather. Today we stand here to make a proclamation. And it's a day after Valentine's Day where this proclamation was more global. It's more than a promise that we bring as men. We all have our various reasons for being here. Each one of them extremely important. Because long after the chocolates are all gone and those flowers have all dried up and put into memorable books, that promise should be still there. We're wearing this little patch that says that we as men are going to spread the word amongst our community members that the violence against women and children must and has to stop. This is a promise to my family, to my wife, my daughters, my aunts, my nieces, but more to my grandma and great-grandma, who I hope is standing beside me or looking down at me and smiling, because she knows that it's more than a promise. It's deep ingrained within my heart, my soul, and my spirit that I will stand up and I will talk to members of our community about the little piece of deer hide that I'm wearing. We will pass the word, and that's our promise. I lift up my hands to ladies in the community and the whole community because this is a global issue. We see it every day in the newspapers and on television. So we stand here as our promise, our declaration as men in, our, in your community. Thank you, Butch. Uh, Hereditary Chief would let us back. Give greetings, and uh, we want to begin by thanking the Lakwanam Elder for welcoming us. I uh, want to honor and lift my hands up to the women who prayed and held this space for our work today. Uh, I want to say that um, honor uh, Ida Chung for coming today to be with us and uh, to my brothers uh, who made a commitment today to do some really good healing work 
Uh, and I want to just say that, um, you know, the Creator uh, laid down a path for us. And our ancestors followed that path. It was our way. And in that way, our ancestors looked up and saw nature around us. We heard the grandmother, uh, I mean, Mother Earth, and um, we've heard, we'll say, grandfather, son, grandmother, moon. The stars are the uncles and the clouds are the aunties. And they worked together to create a beautiful universe, a garden, in which we were born into. And they all worked together. It was like an integrated harmony, an integrated beauty, a love. And our ancestors knew that. They knew their roles and their, and their responsibilities, and they lived in love and harmony. They walked together in a way that we never hurt anybody. We would love one another. And then a colonial tide came. In that colonial tide, uh, the ship went by and it left in its wake a lot of destruction, the fragmented families, communities. And today, what we did and what we said is that we are making a, a statement about standing up and reclaiming our voice, reclaiming our path, reclaiming our culture, uh, a way of being with women, a way of being with our daughters, with our mothers, uh, that this is about love again. This is about integration. This is about working from our heart. And we want you women to know that, that this is why we're here today. This is the statement. This is what the men are wearing in their heart today. This is what we're wearing in our minds and our spirit. And it's uh, we're wearing these uh, things. And I, I want to just say that uh, by putting that on today, is a statement that when I return home uh, that I'm going to share that message of what I've seen and experienced today because it's a very powerful healing experience for me. And I want to thank you, uh, all of you, for the work that you've done. This is beautiful, beyond measure. This is a day of accountability. Uh, this is a day of reclamation. This is a day in which we are saying that we want as men to be the true spiritual warriors that our ancestors were. We want to be the wild men. We don't want to be the savage men. We're reclaiming that place uh, so we can walk in dignity and respect. And so thank you. I raise my hands to you. I raise my hands to you. I raise my hands to you. And now the president of the Neutral Tribal Council, Cliff Atlio. We can initiate the my name is Weekend Inish. I'm from Ahauzit. I represent the New Challenge Nations on the west coast of Vancouver Island as their president. And I'm proud to be here to make that statement that we're standing up as men that are going to spread the message that in our communities, in our values, and in our teachings, there is no room for violence against women and children. I want to acknowledge my relative, the executive director of the Port Alberta Friendship Center. She's a close relative of mine. And, uh, we know the good work that you do. It doesn't go unnoticed. And I want to thank my brothers here, all of them who step forward and act in the right way about declaring that we are opposed and will spread the message to our brothers. I represent about 10,000 people on the west coast of Vancouver Island. So they're going to hear about this. We're going to mount this campaign. It may not be called Moosa, it may be called Mooch or Booch. <laughs> Same message, just as strong. And we'll use Moosa every chance we get as well. Okay, cool. And from the Alberni Valley, Scott Fraser. I'd like to uh, recognize the Songhees and the Squamish traditional territory that we're gathered on today on the steps of the legislature. And I, I stand proudly uh, with the men behind me and the women in front. 
the Moose Hide campaign is about men standing up against violence towards women, and it should be an inspiration. We've seen the reports that have come out uh, once this week, the Human Watch, Human Rights Watch report, um, and the before it, the Amnesty International reports, the Stolen Sisters, and other and other. Uh, scathing indictments of what's happening across this province and this country to uh, women, to Aboriginal women and the realities that they face. So this should be an inspiration, these men standing up to protect women against violence is, uh, is an inspiration to all levels of government and it should be taken as that. This is an opportunity. Thank you. Survivor for Relations and Reconciliation, Ida Chong. Respected chiefs and elders, ladies and gentlemen, uh, firstly, I also would like to acknowledge the traditional territory of our Coast Salish people, Esquimalt, Songhees Nations, and for, particularly the welcome from, from the Kakwankum Nation. I stand before you not just as a representative of government, as a minister for Aboriginal relations and reconciliation, but also as just a citizen of the province of British Columbia, as we all are. And what we want for all people is the ability to live a life of dignity, of freedom, and especially one that is free from violence. So today, this gathering of men is an important and significant one and I want to acknowledge and thank, in particular, Paula Search for making sure that this event took place, for raising awareness, for having men come together in solidarity in this way, and allowing us as women to witness this remarkable day with them. When we, when we ask to be able to live a life that is free from violence, we do not want these as rights that are required to be protected just by law but we want these just to be part of our basic essential rights as people. So today, I want to commend each and every one of you, the men I see behind me, your steps forward each and every day, the awareness that you will continue to raise in your communities can only spread wider, greater. I can tell you that the government knows much work will need to continue in this area of raising awareness. Last spring, we established a new office, a provincial office of domestic violence. They are developing long-term strategies because they know that there are so many services and programs out there, but are they as effective as they can be? And they're working together across government, across communities, across this province and they will find the best practices to make sure we have an effective way to stop the violence against all women, Aboriginal and non-Aboriginal women. I also know, though, they will be developing a specific strategy for Aboriginal women because disproportionately, Aboriginal women face greater violence than non-Aboriginal women. So again today, I just want to thank you for allowing me to join with you to witness your day this gathering. I know that when you return to your communities, and I wish to do so safely, that you can be the spark in your community to ensure that each and every one, young and old, is aware that this is an issue that affects all of us each and every day of our lives. So thank you very much. The Executive Director of the BC Association of Aboriginal Friendship Centres, Paula Sirt. Um, good afternoon. Um, wanted to uh, also thank uh, our uh, our brothers for the welcome into uh, into the territory here. You don't get to see it uh, for how it looks for us, but uh, we're looking out on a, a pretty beautiful place here that's been taken care of 
for a long time by uh, by these men and, and the men that went before them and and the women in their communities too and uh, it's a big honor to be standing here uh, my name is uh, Paul uh, from the carrier territory um, and I, I work for the BC Association of Friendship Centers um, I just wanted to uh, invite our brothers here for a second to uh, to lift your heads up, look up. We've been looking down a lot today, you know, and I want you to look up and uh, take a deep breath, look around at the warriors that you're standing with here. This is an important day. I feel uh, a, a mix of uh, incredible uh, pride and strength and humility in my heart to see these uh, these gentlemen, you know, these healthy warriors that are standing here shoulder to shoulder, uh, and with our sisters that are gathered here, and and you uh, people that have uh, came to see what we're up to, for the media that are here uh, to hear the message um, that violence against women and children must stop. That it's in our hearts and in our will um, and in our deeds to change our own lives, to heal ourselves, you know, to heal our families, to help to heal our communities. And if we see and hear that violence is taking place in our families or in our communities, that we've made a commitment to speak up, that we've made a commitment to talk to strangers, that we've made a commitment to continue to heal ourselves, that we've made a commitment to work with the government, both sides of the house of our government here. So we can have a better future than the past that we've had that our women and children can be safe in our homes and that can be safe in the, in the society that we have here. I'm so honored to have uh, my uh, daughter Raven here and our son Kelly was with us here and I want to really acknowledge them and my wife Asma uh, here as well and to um, publicly thank them for um, the love and patience that they've shown me as I've grown as an individual and uh, on my own healing journey. And I make a public uh, commitment to you to continue um, to be a better man and to be a better father, um, to be a better husband, and uh, to work with all of our brothers here to uh, lift up the women and children in our lives. And I wanted to thank each and every one of you, our bros here, for the courage to come and stand up and a reminder um, that this uh, commitment that we've made here today, um, that, that the fire burns bright in our, our bellies as we go back into our communities, go back into our organizations, and uh, that we keep, keep speaking up, you know, and spread the Moosai campaign. Um, we got lots of Moosides back at the thing, so if you need something to give away, then uh, come back to the hotel there and we'll give you lots. We got 2,000 of them over there. Uh, so uh, when we give them, uh, if you see the people with the hide there, uh, um, we've had a conversation and they've said, uh, as our brother said here, uh, Butch, you know, when I wear this, it's a commitment that I will never use uh, my fist against the women and children in my life, that I won't do violence to them, mental, physical, emotional, spiritual, and that I'll speak up and uh, spread that good medicine. And this, uh, this world needs that desperately. So I wanted to thank again um, our elders, our chiefs, all of our spokespeople. And um, that marks the, uh, the end of our men's uh, Moosehide gathering for today. As we go back into our communities, we've made a commitment that uh, this is a rock in the pond. And there will be rings, concentric rings that go from this. People will see uh, that we're on the move here and that uh, we're, we're, we're ready to roll up our sleeves and do the hard work. 
that it's going to take to make this change. So thank you all very much, all my relations, and we ask our brother uh, Butch and his son Bradley to, uh, to sing us a song to close off our event. Thank you. For the wrap up, we'd like to do a victory song, and we'd like to dedicate it to the to ladies in our lives and in our community that we have made a solemn promise, and we will do what we say. That's a victory song. Drummers, drummers. <coughs> and could I call a drummer down? Join the circle, please. Thank <laughs> you.